So it looks like we're having people join. Um, so as everyone's coming in, I just want to say thank you for joining. Yay! Um, so thanks everyone for joining our first edition of Allowed, uh, Hello Barcada's live stream interview series um, in which artists and writers are invited to share aloud the influences and intentions behind their latest works. Um, I'm Christine Pasala Norland, and I'm the founder and president of Hello Barcada. And I'm excited to be joined tonight by Trinidad Escobar uh, to discuss her new comics collection, Arrive in My Hands. I feel like everyone's coming in and out, so that's fine. I think people are going to figure it out. Um, if the, the, the people who've joined us, you've noticed that the comments have been turned off. Um, but reactions are still good, so throw us some hearts. Um, and But the Q&A um, is open, so you can tap and leave a question at any point. Um, and towards the end of our conversation, we'll, we'll see what questions we can answer in the time that's, in the rest of the half hour that we have with Trinidad. Um, and so, I'll move into our formal, my formal introduction to Trinidad. Uh, Trinidad Escobar is a Filipina artist, um, cartoonist poet based in Milpitas, California, whose comics have appeared in such publications as The New Yorker and NPR, um, in anthologies like the Eisner Award-winning Drawing Power, and in the Broken Frontier Award-winning One-Shot, Ode to Keisha, which was written by Jamila Rouser of Black Jose Press. Um, also published by Black Jose Press, is Trinidad's new book, uh, Arrive in My Hands, a comics collection in which Trinidad explores the power of the erotic and her demisexual lesbian experience, and a work that also invites others to arrive as their whole being free of colonial shame and judgment. So welcome, Trinidad. Thank you Hi. so much for making time. Thank you um, for making time. Uh, so I just wanted to start off first with how are you feeling now that Arrive is in, is out there, it's in the world? I'm feeling good. I'm, I'm excited that, you know, Jamila, Black Jose Press, gave this book a chance. It was actually her idea to, hmm. to make this book. So, um, yeah, I, I actually still can't really believe it. It hasn't really sunk in yet. I haven't told my parents because I don't want them to go Google it. <laughs> Even though I'm going to show it to them eventually. That's how I've always been. I do like, you know, the, the naughty daughter stuff. And then I'll tell them about it later <laughs> for kicks. But I can't deal with it in the present time. <laughs> yeah. You know, parents. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. My, my I mean, parents know who I am. They know who I am. Yeah. So. Like I have. Absolutely. I completely relate. I talked to my parents last night. Did I tell them that I was doing an interview? They don't understand what Instagram is. So it's like, I'll tell them after. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. um, oh, good. And, um, and so just so people who haven't maybe, maybe this is the first time they're hearing about it. Um, the digital copy is available now. Um, but the it's pre-sale right now for the physical copy. Right. And, um, didn't I, did you just receive a, a what do you want to call it? An, a, a preview copy of the hard copy? Oh, right. The, uh, the, the, uh, arc. Um, I have not received it yet. Uh, okay. Jamila has it okay. and I'm going to get it soon. Okay. And I great. can't wait. <laughs> yeah. yeah looks, I'm excited. Yeah. So, I'm, I hope that people like it. Jamila put a lot of effort and time, thought and heart into designing the book and um, really pushed me to make it look beautiful. So I hope you enjoy it. Great. Mm -hmm. It's so, um, now you mentioned that it was actually Jamila's idea to, to create this collection. What, mm -hmm. um, when did you first start was that the first time you started thinking about putting these comics together as a collection or had you considered this um, on your own prior to? I, I had been drawing and writing the comics with the um, expectation that they would eventually become a book. 
Um, but I, um, you know, constantly had imposter syndrome and would think, I can't do that yet. Or when I'm ready, one day when people want to see this, then I'll put it all together. Um, but mm -hmm. yeah, Jamila already, you know, had been a reader uh, and enjoyed my comics and was like, we need to make this a book. And it's going to be so beautiful. She was so excited. And, you know, sometimes when you're a cartoonist and you're alone working, you don't really know you know, you don't really know if your work is good. You just know whether or not people are reading every now and then. Um, yeah. And uh, all you really know is like, do you enjoy it? Do you feel yourself growing? You know, so when you, you get a compliment from someone like Jamila, who's like, I want this book to see that excitement, it really gave me hope. And it, it really made me feel like I could do a lot more. So um, it's, it means a lot to me. Yeah. Yeah, is, that's Yeah. I mean, that's great. So like, how did, how was she introduced to it? Was it through your, your Patreon um, subscription through I the, believe, for these stories? I think that, um, that she saw some things on Instagram and then mm. signed up for Patreon also and, and picked which uh, stories on Patreon that she wanted to include in the book. And then we made extras just for the book. So things okay. that people haven't seen yet. Okay. So, yeah. So I guess, um, is the, is the collection, does it incorporate, so it incorporates a, a mixture of comics that you've potentially had already created and ones you created specifically for this publication? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think pretty um, much half of the book is new. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And that's, so half of the book, so uh, it's 22 pieces of work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So 11. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, so how long was that creative process? I think we finished the book pretty quickly. Um, I would say that uh, from beginning to end, um, we finished the book in less than six months. Ooh. Yeah. Why? Yeah. She, she's very efficient. <laughs> and I had a lot of things ready and I had a lot of ideas already that I wanted to pump out. And she just so happened to like them all. So uh, everything kind of moved seamlessly. We were That's really great. lucky. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, I think of anything as far as creation goes, there's always, you know, I prepare, there's bound to be a hiccup somewhere. But it sounds like, no, like you went from start to finish and it just came together, which is such a sign from the universe, I think, that this is supposed to be something that should be out there. I'm glad you're saying that. <laughs> As a Filipina, like, it yeah. means a lot. <laughs> I mean, yes, and we will, I'm gonna put a pin in that because we need to come back to that. Um, yeah, I really, I'm excited to hear that uh, the pathway to ha seeing this come to fruition um, was so open um, it because honestly, like, I mean, it's really validating to hear. I'm so excited for both of you um, because there's so many instances where it's just constantly, uh, it's not even like climbing uphill. It's like, it's, it's a wall. <laughs> you're like trying, you're trying to find a way up to it. So um, yeah. And so as you're creating, um, there's, did you ever literally imagine who you were making this work for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I think that I 100% was making it for just Filipinas, um, brown people who, uh, come from a particular background, you know, like for Filipinas, we come from a background that's largely Catholic or Christian and, um, and that informs a lot of the ways we see ourselves and our, our gender, how we perform that gender. And then, and, you know, it also informs how we interact with or experience sex, sensuality. Um, and so I, I always imagined I was making it for someone like me when I was a, a teenager, like, you know, 18, 19, 20, really trying to uh, establish like who I am or, or just explore who I was. And like around that time I had, 
you know, I, I had a long time boyfriend and then I developed a crush on a girl in an English class in community college. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I'm so bad because now I'm cheating in my mind. And it's also with a girl. And, um, and I left my uh, boyfriend at the time uh, because I was trying to be honest with, you know, who I was. And, um, and then I was like too scared to like, mm -hmm. you know, do anything about that. And I didn't even know where to go to for resources on like how to date as a queer person. Like all I knew was, you know, watching my, my sister dating and like things from TV, but you don't really see a lot of queer content mm -hmm. or at least not um, healthy queer content. So uh, it was all, you know, like up in the air, you had to figure things out. And, and I wish I had a book that was, not necessarily instructional or didactic, but one that was beautiful and intimate um, and just kind of showed how to peer into that world, how to step into it. Yeah, step into that like ownership within your own body too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the, one of the things I really appreciate about the work is there's, there's the word isn't imperfect, but there's you like I, I described it originally as like tension. There's a push and there's a push and pull. Um, there is there are stories where it's um, I think of the one I forget what the name of the title is where she she doesn't realize why she's attracted to this other to this woman that's just walked into the eyeglass shop, mm -hmm. I believe. Um, and then, and yet, and you know, juxtaposed to stories where um, both women have the agency and are, um, yeah, are in their relationship together. And then there's then, um, yeah. So it's, I see what you're, I see where your intention is there, is there, like that you've provided enough examples of experiences um, that it's, again, it's like you said, it's not didactic. It's there to help validate, like, yes, you don't need, like, it, sometimes it's not like, oh, yes, I am. It's questioning coming from a background um, where you were raised het, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it's, oh, my stomach. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really amazing collection. So I'm so excited for everyone to read it and see it. Um, where, so as you mentioned, like, you know, there is this, we share this background of being raised uh, Filipina. Um, and so I have, I imagine there were internalized ideas that you had to free yourself from in order to feel allowed to create this. Mm -hmm. um, so were there? Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. just me. That's I don't want to project that. Were there any ideas yeah. like that? I, you know, I've always liked erotica and I read it, you know, since I was much younger and I like just consume it, you know, just literature and, um, and film, uh, poetry. I'm really into erotica and I always wanted to make erotica, but I couldn't draw for a long time. Like I couldn't really, really draw people effectively. Mm. And, um, and I didn't want to necessarily just write prose either. I wanted to make comics specifically, like comics for adults um, that I would have wanted when I was younger as a young adult um, and still want as a older adult. Um, but Softly was the uh, yeah. comic that you had uh, referred to. And that one is, I made that because I, I used to do public speaking with an LGBTQ center, the Billy DeFrank uh, LGBTQ center in San Jose. And we would go to schools, high schools, middle schools, colleges, and we would talk to students um, about gay stuff, about queer stuff. And, uh, you know, students would say things like, I guess I could be gay. I never really thought about it. I don't know if I've ever been attracted to anyone, you know? Hmm. And, and Filipinas specifically would say things like, well, I think girls are pretty, but... Um, like, I don't know if I've ever been attracted. And then, you know, I, I'll have people say, well, yeah, I, I know when a girl is hot. And then, 
and something's a little different about the way that they're talking about it, you know? And I'm like, that's, that's the thing. When the girl mm. walks in the room and she's so hot, you had to look away or you had, you felt a little, like a little something <laughs> there it was, you know, but you were trained not to acknowledge that you're trained to mm. see that as a, a threatening feeling or a feeling of like insecurity, but really there's just a lot of desire and there's a lot of, um, sensual energy out there that we're taught to see as bad for us, something mm. that will make us bad. Uh, and we're constantly as Filipinas trying to figure out how to not be bad, or if we are going to be bad, how to do it really well so that we're not too bad. You know, <laughs> we, we're, we oppress ourselves. We suppress a lot of parts of ourselves and it's not necessarily our fault. We've been conditioned um, to not own that part of ourselves, not just sex, but um, this ability to go really deep, into ourselves, into our senses mm. and, and take things in um, because we've experienced so much pain and discomfort too, especially with sex and sensuality that I think we block a lot of it out of us so that it's hard to, to feel pleasure and it's hard to feel joy or even recognize it. Specifically for Filipinas, you know, and queer and trans um, feminine people in our communities. Yeah, I mean, um... Yes, I speak of it in the in the review. Um, yeah, when you know my experience when I'm raised, um, I am cis het, and I'm raised to think of sex as something is it's it's for production, right? It's to prolong um, bloodline. It's to make sure that we have someone to carry our last name. Um, it's so a book in a collection like this reminds, or it's funny because the word doesn't remind. It just, it makes me aware like, no, wait, this isn't just for instance, for my family, mm -hmm. this, this ability that I have, this is also something for me. Like it's for me to feel whole. Um, and this is what, one of the things that I'm excited for other people to, um, experience with the collection as well is that it's about just not just the connection with other people but within yourself so um thank you for that uh can you so no it's, i don't know if it's a i guess it's not a teaser or it is a teaser but it's not like we're not going really deep into it but like as far as titles go um which were some of the ones that existed before the project you know, I think Jamila one... knows this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have a terrible memory. I know that we, um, I think that we came up with a few, or I did in my head, and now I don't remember. <laughs> oh, uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. That's I, right. I have a terrible memory. I think, I, you know, I use the word arrive a lot because um, back in college, there was a faculty competition amongst faculty, not students. So faculty were um, invited to submit to the um, school literary journal, uh, an erotic poem, sex specific, that could not include a certain list of words. So it hmm. couldn't say things like wet, you can't say things like hard. Um, <clears throat> and so one of the words that like I used to challenge myself to write, uh, I submitted to the competition, and they didn't read it because I'm not allowed to submit to it. <laughs> But I did it, and um, I, I used the word arrive as a way to communicate orgasm, um, but also to, um, um, to even just approach somebody. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that for a lot of femmes, uh, approaching on its own is uh, uh, a huge journey, an adventure, <laughs> uh, a huge challenge, um, because we're taught as feminine people to be a certain way to be submissive mm. and um to be the receivers of an action and um and then to have that agency to go after someone to to like follow that desire um for a lot of people that can feel like a treacherous scary really really scary act um and and so arrive for me is is multiple things but mm. one of those things also is just beginning it's, it's stepping up yeah 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 I mean I imagine it first you have to acknowledge it so first you have to arrive at the acknowledgement 
that you have this feeling towards someone. And then it's the decision to, uh, like you mentioned, approach. I mean, I would think I, it's funny because I take, go to a physical space. And so I'm like, oh, that person's across the room. Hmm. <laughs> like, how do you arrive with the gumption to take that first step? <laughs> to, yeah. yeah, like to go across <laughs> and say, hi, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so there's, it's really interesting because I love that use of your thought behind the word arrive is so much is just one example um, reflected throughout the collection um, from this very poetic the from the poetry with the words and the imagery um, imagery, including um, magical and mythical, like the mermaids, um, like the women with wings. Um, and then as well as horror imagery. So there's, the zombies, and then there's a scene in a graveyard. Why was it important to you to connect such images, such imagery with ideas and words of sensuality? Man, what a great question. <laughs> Thanks. Ooh, you're a great interviewer. Um, <laughs> um, I enjoy Gothic literature. Mm. And in a lot of Gothic literature, some of the main themes are um, our horror, you know, and, and a lot of that is intertwined with sex, I think specifically for women, because a lot of, uh, like I've been saying, you know, a lot of, uh, approaches to sex and ideas of sex can be mm. seen as dangerous or seen, um, as dark or, mm -hmm. um, mysterious. And, uh, and so for me, it's, it's also natural to be drawn to those things too. It wouldn't, um, I meet a lot of queer folks uh, at Comic Cons, and and all those people are 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 a little bit goth, just you know, just like a little hint of goth here and there uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> thrown in, and I love it. It's just uh, people who are drawn to the fantastic and the mystical, um, the surreal, and and that for a lot of people, those experiences are very real, especially for you know, a Filipina who grew up with, you know, the mumu and capre and all these, you know, the aswang, we grew up with these ideas, even if you, for a lot of people, maybe they didn't hear about the aswang in North America, right? But you might have grown up with your parents saying things about ghosts. And, mm -hmm. um, and so it's just naturally a part of you to be like, spooked and also thrilled <laughs> by it. It's like, safe, safely mm -hmm. scared, which I think, you know, sex can be mm -hmm. uh, a way to be safely scared or uh, as a demisexual, at least for me, it's like um, the best like sensual intimacy for me is when you can feel safe. Uh, and, you know, I don't think that's a lot to ask for, but it's a requirement for me to like get off. <laughs> Even in literature, like if it's a scary scene for a woman, I don't want to read that. That's not you right. know, sexy for me. It's uh, yeah, my dog is knocking at the door. <laughs> I think my partner is watching if you want to come get him. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really interesting. That, so the idea then is, um, for her to hear what you're saying is, yeah, it's the safe space to, it's vulnerable. I like it's not necessarily I mean maybe it's scary but that's right the scare comes from a place of vulnerability right um so yeah that's that's great and then um speaking to Aswang and um our culture our shared culture Filipino culture there's also I can't help it but pick up on all the a lot of the Filipino cultural symbols um and references like the <laughs> Like the Filipiniana dress in arrive in the title work arrive in my hand, um, and the Nipa hut, which you know, like I grew up learning about how my family grew up in a Nipa hut. So, so Siwan was amazing um, and felt so like such a call to um, to connect with uh, with me as a Pinay. Um, but how did these framings help you in telling the stories you wanted to tell? Mm. Yeah, you know, and I think of the Nipa hut too. I think of um, I, I have paintings in my house that my parents brought 
from the 70s and 60s、mm-hmm. from the Philippines, you know, show by a Nihon, sharing community spirit and people holding, you know, a Nipa hat, you know, over their shoulders. And that, would, that painting was by our dinner table. And for Filipinos,、mm-hmm. the dinner table is everything, right?、Um, And so I would always look at that and, and think of the Nipa hut. And I would see that as you know, a symbol of family. And I would romanticize that my birth family lived in a Nipa hut and they didn't.、Um, they lived in <laughs> like a, sh- a shack, like made out of tin、okay. or something, but、um, close enough. But I, I like, would romanticize it, you know, like countryside, Philippine countryside. It's so like, beautiful.、Um, and、uh, those are my roots. And,、mm-hmm. and, uh, and then, you know, I imagine、um, my. Family members who were queer who also lived、uh, in the countryside and got to experience like isolation and their, their relationship in, in the quiet, the quiet of the, the Filipino countryside, you know.、Um, I just imagined that to be a dream, you know, like、mm-hmm. not necessarily、um, beyond the discrimination and fear of being killed、uh, as a queer couple in the Philippines. Right.、Um, right. Like to have this like safe, Beautiful symbol of, of being Filipino and, and having a home.、Mm. Like, yeah, that was really important for me, even if it's just one person who would even understand that or just see, you know, to be like, okay, well, maybe that's a Nipa hat. Maybe that's, you know, she's Filipino. Okay. But for someone to be like, oh, that made me feel good to see it, that, yeah, I'm glad it was effective in that way. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. And so, I mean, there's a lot of, it's real interesting. And again, thank you for, for joining tonight and listening to your responses. There's a lot of callback to when you were younger, to your culture, to what you read、um, growing up. And so, as my last question, I guess, for, before we get, it looks like we have a question from the audience.、Um, did you find any kind of healing in the creation of Arrive in My Hands?、Hmm. I think I'm experiencing it now. I think it's only now that I'm starting to、um, let those stories sink in. You know, sometimes、mm-hmm. when I'm writing, I'm exploring. I'm not necessarily saying, oh, this、mm-hmm. thing happened to me, and so I'm going to draw it, or, oh, cool idea. I'm going to make it now. Instead, I'm actually trying to work something out within myself. So, like,、um, uh, let's see. What's the story? My mermaid story.、Um, That one is, is not just about a mermaid or seeing、um, or having you know, this tryst or this meeting, this meet cute in the, in the ocean.、Um, for me, it was, it's about depths and feeling stranded and feeling out in the middle of nowhere and still feeling safe.、Mm-hmm. Um, And I think that's what it is to be a queer person is you, you're out in the wilderness all the time. And for people who are visibly, you know,、um, uh, who can be read, you know, on the street,、um, I feel like safety isn't an option for most people. And so we have to、uh, find these different ways as queer people to. Find safety within our own minds and within our own bodies. And what a fucking task that is if you don't fucking、mm-hmm. feel safe in your own body、um, mm-hmm. uh, because of you know, sexual violence or abuse as a child or whatever.、Um, we experience so much in our bodies. And so I imagine you know, my mermaid story to be like this mythical being that's somewhere within me, someone who lives in those depths, someone who's around it all the time and is still alive and flourishing and has adapted to it. Um, meeting the person who's stranded. And I imagine that within myself a lot、um, that, that different parts of yourself can meet and they can fall in love. Yeah.、Oh. Thank you.、Um, so let's see, we do have one. We have a question. And so we are going to take questions.、Um, we have a few more minutes. So if anyone else has a question, go ahead and throw it in. By just tapping on that little question mark on the bottom of your screen.、Um, this one comes from user Ube Donuts.、Uh, congrats, Trinidad. How do you plan to celebrate when your printed book drops? Aw, I'm going to do a photo shoot with my book. I bought clothes <laughs> that match the colors of the book. And I'm going to go take my ass up to the hills with my partner, and she has to take pictures of me <laughs> with, our, with our dogs. That's how I'm celebrating. 
Nice. Yeah. Ooh, to buy clothes right now. So that's a big deal in the I, pandemic. <laughs> like, you have a place to go and take pictures. That's yeah. awesome. Buying clothes just to go up to the hills with my dogs. That's what's happening. <laughs> it's like such a gay thing to do. It's a very lesbian thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, are there any more questions? Oh, we're seeing a lot of love. So appreciate everyone Thank who's you. coming in. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, so then I guess if there are no more questions, um, I did want to throw it to you Trinidad to let us know what's next for you and arrive in my hands. We're mentioning the the physical book. So Mm -hmm. when is that supposed to come out? Uh, I'm going blank on on specific dates. We're supposed to, it's supposed to come out, I believe in June, Jamila. And, uh, (laughs) but I think it might come out a little bit sooner. There's a possibility that it's going to get printed sooner. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, I have an upcoming event with the Ruby in San Francisco um, on March 31st. And I have a couple more online events in April and I'll post about those sometime soon. Uh, But for now, uh, check out the website because we have um, original artwork, uh, pencil, graphite drawings that are available as bundles with the book. So thanks everyone for coming. Yeah. And so, um, so then the, the site will be, I think you can get there with arrive in my hands.com, mm-hmm. um, which will d- uh, redirect you to the black Jose page where uh, everything that uh, Trinidad has mentioned is listed and then follow you on here. So I think you see her handle um, in the screen, uh, but do you, you also set up a Twitter account, right? But that, and that one is a different handle. That is, it's witch Trinidad, like creepy witch, not witch Trinidad. It's a play <laughs> on words. Okay. <laughs> um, so yeah, so follow, make sure to follow Trinidad both on Twitter at, at witch Trinidad and then here on Instagram um, at Escobar Comics. Um, and yeah, and then uh, let's see, anything else to plug? Oh yeah, is the Ruby, is that in person or is that going to be virtual? I think they're going to try to do virtual. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. So then everybody look for that in, um, I think, I mean, I will reshare it. So I will reshare it. <laughs> once Yay. Let's turn it ad posts about it. Um, and I believe Black Jose Press will probably uh, share it too. So, yeah. So I wanted to then thank you again, Trinidad, for making time tonight to discuss this very personal work. Uh, and congratulations again on its publication. Um, I, yeah, I, I've mentioned it several times. I'm so excited for the many women and femmes out there who will feel seen by and centered by this work. And it's so needed. Um, so, yes. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Take you. Care. And then to our viewers, thanks for tuning in to this first episode. Um, I, we will be posting this recording. Um, on the IG video feed for Hello Barcada. Um, and we, I will get it, actually get it onto our YouTube channel as well. So look for those and when, I, when they're ready, I'll go ahead and post them on Instagram. So yeah. Awesome. Take care. So thanks everyone, take Bye. care. Bye.